So a concealed carry reciprocity bill has been introduced into Congress as well as a bill which will remove the federal regulations on suppressors. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think that the second amendment is all you need to concealed carry and to possess a suppressor, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, that is USCCA. USCCA through your membership provides you training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you have a firearm, if you concealed carry, I highly recommend you look into some sort of self-defense legal protection. USCCA is the company I recommend, and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section. So I know we talk about anti-gun legislation a lot on this channel, especially recently, because those are a lot of the proposed bills that have been hitting Congress. But I wanted to bring to your attention two pro second amendment bills which are proposed as well. The first one we're gonna be talking about is the Constitutional Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act of 2021. This has been introduced in the Senate by Senator John Cronin out of Texas. It is also co-sponsored by Bill Haggerty of Tennessee, Chuck Grassley of Iowa, Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma, as well as there are 28 other co-sponsors on this specific Senate bill as well. Now this is a proposed piece of legislation, but what it seeks to do is to have concealed carry reciprocity across the US. This is an issue, especially in more restrictive states. For example, like here in California, California does not recognize any other state's concealed carry permits. There are some states that recognize other states' permits. So if you had a permit in one state, the other state may recognize yours, but for restrictive states like California and other states like New York, they simply just don't recognize other states. California just doesn't recognize any other state's concealed carry permits. You have to have a California carry permit and be a resident of California to even have that. But even in California itself, there are some jurisdictions that don't even issue them. So concealed carry in California is a issue altogether in itself. But then you have this whole issue that they don't even recognize other states concealed carry permits either. So first, let's look at what this proposed concealed carry reciprocity bill will do, and then we'll look at what it doesn't do. Now, we don't have the text of this actual bill right now, but there was a prior iteration of this bill, which was introduced the last session of Congress, and that was S-69. And so it's going to be likely the same language, and it's going to be mirrored in this iteration as well. Now, this piece of legislation will allow individuals with concealed carry privileges in their home state to conceal carry in any other states that also allow concealed carry. So if you have a concealed carry permit in your state and you're going to another state that also allows concealed carry, then you will actually be allowed to conceal carry in that state under the permit that you have in your home state. Now, the other thing that this bill will do is says that it treats state issued concealed carry permits like driver's licenses, where an individual can use their home state license to drive in another state but must abide by that other state's speed limit or road laws. So just because you have a concealed carry permit in your home state doesn't mean you could come to the other state and just skirt their state laws. Now let's look at some things that this proposed bill will not do. The first thing that it will not do is it will not set up a federal concealed carry permit system. It just isn't doing that. You will still have state permitting. So again, nothing at the federal level as far as concealed carry permits. It also doesn't allow citizens of a certain state to circumvent those state laws. So for example, if you're in California, maybe you're in a restrictive area, county, city that just doesn't issue concealed carry permits, that doesn't mean then you could apply for, let's say an out of state permit for somewhere like Utah, get that and then say, hey, I'm gonna carry in California under this uh, federal bill that says you have to recognize my out of state permit. It's not gonna allow you to circumvent your own state laws. You would likely still need to have a state permit here. It also won't allow individuals to circumvent federal laws. If you're a prohibited person, um, again, you if you're a prohibited person, you will not be able to conceal carry under this law. It's not gonna change anything about that. And it will also not change any state laws that restrict where you can and cannot carry a firearm. If there are state laws that say, hey, you can't carry in this building, in this state building, um, during council meetings, things like that, this piece of legislation is not going to allow you to circumvent those place restrictions either. Now, what is my takeaway on this and whether or not I think this piece of legislation will pass? Well, it didn't pass last session and it's likely not gonna pass this session either. I'm not overly optimistic about it, because of the makeup currently of Congress. Um, it does have a good amount of co-sponsors currently. Like I said, I believe it's like 28, 29 co-sponsors as of right now. But again, it's got a really long road, especially with the current makeup of Congress. Along those notes, there's another House piece of legislation. So the one we're talking about here was in the Senate, but there also is HR 38, which was introduced in January 
does something very similar, can still carry reciprocity. That one has, I believe, as of right now, 182 co-sponsors. So has some significant amount of co-sponsors. Um, we're not sure really where that's going to go as well as this one. But again, I'm not super overly optimistic. It is good that we have pro-gun pieces of legislation being introduced. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to pass. And especially right now when you had things like HR 8 and HR 1446 pass the House, which were anti-gun pieces of legislation, it's unlikely that these pro-gun pieces of legislation will now pass with the current makeup. Now, the next proposed bill I want to talk about is titled the Silencers Helping Us Save Act of 2021, also known as the Shush Act. This proposed legislation was introduced by Bob Good out of Virginia, and it seeks to deregulate the federal laws around suppressors. If you're not aware, currently right now, suppressors are regulated under the National Firearms Act. Under the NFA, which is the National Firearms Act, you have to register suppressors as well as pay a $200 tax stamp. And then along with all of that, you also are going to have a very long waiting period, months and months on end for you to take possession of suppressors. Well, this piece of legislation, this proposed bill, seeks to deregulate them federally and remove all of those laws surrounding them. Now, another thing that you heard me say what this bill proposes to do is to preempt state laws. And so one of the good things about state preemption is that it is going to remove any state's ban on possession of them. So for example, again, in the state of California, there is a ban on the possession of suppressors by an ordinary law-abiding individuals like me and you. Well, if this piece of legislation were to pass, it would preempt those state laws and actually remove any state law that actually had bans on possession of these items. So it could open the door for individuals in restrictive states like California to finally be in possession of those items. There's also a Senate companion bill, which is introduced, which will mirror this one that is in the House. And that is sponsored by Mike Lee out of Utah, Ted Cruz, of course, out of Texas, and John Cronin out of Texas, which you heard us talked about Cronin in the prior uh, bill that we discussed here. Now, I wanted to read you a statement from Bob Good, who has introduced this proposed piece of legislation. He said that I oppose regulating or taxing the people's right to keep and bear arms. No constitutional right should be at risk due to public opinion or subject to regulatory and tax burdens. For the Second Amendment, this sentiment certainly extends to safety accessories for firearms. I am proud to join Senator Mike Lee in introducing legislation that would eliminate the current antiquated and overly complicated process for acquiring suppressors and ensure that their purchase is no longer subject to federal regulation. So that is their statement about why they're introducing this piece of legislation. And I think a lot of us here on this channel and in the US at large will agree with those statements. Now, what's my general takeaway on the Shush Act? Well, I'm not overly optimistic about this one either. I think it's, again, going to be very hard to pass any of these pro-gun pieces of legislation right now with the current makeup of the House and Senate. I think it's just going to be very hard. It wasn't done in prior sessions of Congress, and so I don't really think it's going to happen with this one either, especially with the heavy anti-gun push that's been happening right now from the top to bottom, from Biden calling for new gun control laws and as well as individuals in the House and Senate also calling for new pieces of anti-gun legislation as well. But if you support these and if you want to actually see these gain support, contact your local representatives. If you're in one of these states, contact your local representatives. We need as many House representatives supporting these bills, Senate representatives sponsoring these bills. And so if you want to see these actually gain more traction, one of the things we can do is contact our representatives and tell them we support these and to get behind them and gain them more traction and more attention. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell because it helps the channel analytics, helps to spread the word about the Second Amendment, also spread the word about 2A news like this that is going on in the U.S. to affect your Second Amendment rights. Also, I want to mention real quick that coming up this weekend, we are going to have the Armed in May event in San Bernardino at Route 66 Shooting Sports Park. I'll put links to the event and all the details down in the description section if you want to take a look at it for yourself. It's going to be a two-day event, May 8th and May 9th. You can come out either of those days, hang out with me as well as Reno May from the Reno May channel. Hang out with us, shoot some guns, meet some cool vendors, um, have some good food. There's going to be tons of giveaways and tons of companies out there where you can win some prizes. So come out, meet with us, hang out with us. It should be a good time. And I'm really excited to meet a lot of you guys out there. It's going to be a great opportunity to finally actually get to interact with a lot of you guys face to face. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and station will be maintained by armed scholars.